Bombing and the threat of being bombed are harsh realities in today's world. The public is becoming more aware of those incidents of violence and the potential for destruction and physical harm. Law enforcement is charged with the responsibility of protecting life and property. But law enforcement alone will not do the job. It's up to each and every one to do their part. Training and awareness will go a long way toward making your homes and workplaces safer and more secure environments. The information provided in this training program is only a guide. So it's up to you to fully understand and follow your organization's policy and procedures relating to bomb threats and similar activity. First, let's review some basics. Bombs can be constructed to look like almost anything and can be placed or delivered in any number of ways. If you have an image of a large bomb, such as the ones dropped from airplanes, the probability of finding this type of bomb is almost non-existent. The only common denominator existing among bombs is that they are designed or intended to explode. Experience has shown that most bombs are homemade and are limited in their design only by the imagination and resources of the bomber. The best rule of thumb to use when searching for a bomb is to look for anything unusual. Let the trained bomb technician determine what is or is not a bomb. Bomb threats are delivered in a variety of ways, but the majority of threats are telephoned into the target. Occasionally, these calls are through a third party, and sometimes the threat is communicated in writing or by a recording. Why do bombers call in the threat? Basically, there are two logical explanations. First, the caller has definite knowledge or believes that an explosive or incendiary bomb has been or will be placed in your facility, and he or she wants to minimize the personal injury or property damage. The caller may be the person who placed the device, or the caller may be someone who has become aware of such information. Secondly, the caller wants to create an atmosphere of anxiety and panic, which will, in turn, result in a disruption of the normal activities at the facility where the device is purportedly placed. Whatever the reason, there will certainly be a reaction to it. To prepare for such incidents, it's important that proper planning and training are implemented. Proper planning reduces the threat of panic which is the most contagious of all human emotions. Once a state of panic has been reached, the potential for injury and property damage is greatly increased. In the context of a bomb threat, panic is the ultimate achievement of the caller. Without going into great detail, let's just say that your organization must develop two separate but interdependent plans. A physical security plan and a bomb incident plan. Physical security provides for the protection of property, personnel, facilities, and materials against unauthorized entry, trespass, damage, sabotage, or other criminal acts. The physical security plan deals with prevention and control of access to the building. In most instances, some form of physical security may already be in existence, although not necessarily intended to prevent a bomb attack. The bomb incident plan provides detailed procedures to be implemented when a bombing attack is executed or threatened. In planning for the bomb incident, a chain of command must be established and only by using an established organization and procedures can the bomb incident be handled with the least risk to all concerned. Part of the plan's success will be dependent upon the amount of training and awareness of the plan by everyone involved. This video program cannot possibly list every precaution to take or how to develop a complete physical security and bomb incident plan. But it's important to understand the things that you can do to help protect life and property. Most of the following recommendations may already be implemented at your facility. But let's quickly review. In considering measures to increase security for your building, it's highly recommended that you contact your local police department for guidance regarding a specific plan for your facility. Access control, fencing, and lighting will help reduce the vulnerability of a facility to bomb attack. 
But these are not always possible in hotels or other public places. Bombs being delivered by car or left in a car are a grave reality. Parking should be restricted within 300 feet from your building, but again, this may not be possible. Where guests or visitors to a building park their vehicles to load or unload baggage or register, baggage handlers and other employees should be alert for any vehicles parked there too long. If at all possible, properly identify employee vehicles and park them closest to the building with visitor vehicles parked at a distance as much as possible. Heavy shrubs and vines should be kept close to the ground to reduce their potential to conceal criminals or bombs. Window boxes and planters are perfect receptacles for the bomber. A highly visible security patrol can be a significant deterrent. Burglar alarm systems properly maintained are effective deterrents, particularly when signs are posted indicating that such a system is in place. Entrance and exit doors with hinges and hinge pins on the inside to prevent removal should be installed. There are a variety of physical security procedures that can be developed for your particular building or facilities. Controls should be established for positively identifying personnel who are authorized access to critical areas and for denying access to unauthorized personnel. These controls should extend to the inspection of all packages and materials taken into critical areas. Security and maintenance personnel should be alert for people who act in a suspicious manner, as well as objects, items, or parcels which look out of place or suspicious. Surveillance should be established to include potential hiding places for unwanted individuals, such as in stairwells, restrooms, and any vacant office space. Doors or access ways to such areas as boiler rooms, mail rooms, computer areas, switchboards, and elevator control rooms should remain locked when not in use. It's important to establish a procedure for accountability of keys. If keys cannot be accounted for, the lock should be changed. Good housekeeping is also vital. Trash or dumpster areas should remain free of debris as bombs can easily be concealed in the trash. Take a look around your facility and see the many ways you can increase physical security. Okay, how do you properly respond to a bomb threat? The first place to concentrate is where the incoming calls originate, and that's generally the telephone switchboard. In small facilities, there may be only one person available to answer the phone, but in larger facilities, there may be several. It is always desirable to have more than one person listen in on the call. A covert signaling system should be implemented so another person can be signaled to listen in on the conversation. The reason for this is two people will recall more information about the caller than just one person. Most of all, however, is that the person taking the call remain calm because this is the best method of obtaining more information from the bomb threat caller. This is especially true if the caller wants to avoid injuries or death. If you tell the bomber that the building is occupied or that it cannot be evacuated, the bomber may be more willing to give more information about the bomb's location, components, method of initiation, or other information. The bomb threat caller is the best source of information. Naturally, during the planning stage of bomb threat prevention, you should have written procedures and a prepared list of questions to ask the bomber. When a bomb threat is called in, keep the caller on the line as long as possible. Ask him or her to repeat the message and try to record every word spoken by the caller. If the caller does not indicate the location of the bomb or the time the bomb will go off, ask for this information. Inform the caller that the building is occupied and the detonation of a bomb could result in death or serious injury to many innocent people. Pay attention to background noises, such as motors running, music playing, and any other noise which may give a clue as to the location of the caller. Listen closely to the voice, the quality of the voice, such as 
Is the person calm, excited, or other clues? Listen for accents or speech impediments. Try to get as much information as you can. When is the expected explosion time? What type of explosive is it? How can the bomb be recognized? What would set it off? The caller's motive for setting the bomb? And what would influence him or her to change his mind? Information is your primary objective at this point. Immediately after the caller hangs up, report the threat to the person designated by management to receive such information. The bomb incident plan should have the procedures on who is to be called, such as other management personnel, the police department, FBI, or other appropriate agencies. The sequence of notification should be established in the plan. Ask the person or persons who took the call to remain available, as law enforcement personnel will want to interview you. When a written threat is received, save all materials, including any envelope or container. Envelopes and other materials may contain fingerprints, hair fragments, postal marks, handwriting, typewriter type, or even the person's DNA. A person's saliva from licking the envelope or a postage stamp can reveal the bomber's DNA in the scientific laboratory. Treat all materials carefully and don't destroy any type of evidence or material. Reduce contamination of the evidence by handling it carefully or securing it until authorities arrive. If possible, put everything in a plastic bag or other secure container. While written messages are usually associated with generalized threats and extortion attempts, a written warning of a specific device may occasionally be received. It should never be ignored. It's decision time. Do you evacuate the building, or what do you do? First of all, follow your company's established procedures. That's why they're there. Management must make the decision, and it's up to everyone to know and follow established procedures. Right now, let's take a look at essentially three alternatives for bomb threat response. One, you could ignore the threat. Two, you can evacuate immediately. Three, search and evacuate if warranted. Let's review these three alternatives. While a statistical argument could be made that very few bomb threats are real, it cannot be overlooked that bombs have been located in connection with threats. There is the possibility that if the bomb threat caller feels that he or she has been ignored, he or she may go beyond the threat and actually plant a bomb. Evacuating immediately on every bomb threat is an alternative that, on face value, appears to be the preferred approach. However, immediate evacuation is disruptive on your business. If the bomb threat caller knows your policy is to evacuate every time, the caller can force your business to a standstill. In the past, employees have made bomb threats to get out of work. Students have made bomb threats to avoid a class or miss a test. Also, a bomber wishing to cause personal injuries could place a bomb near an exit normally used to evacuate and then call in the threat. Initiating a search after a threat is received and evacuating the building after a suspicious package or device is found is perhaps the most desired approach. Again, the decision for each of these alternatives is determined by management and company procedures. How do you evacuate in event an evacuation is ordered? Again, we go back to the planning stage where proper procedures are developed and everyone is trained in these procedures. An evacuation unit consisting of management personnel should be organized and trained. The organization and training of this unit should be coordinated with the development of the bomb incident plan as well as with all tenants or guests of a building or facility. The team should consider priority of evacuation, such as by floor level. If you know where a bomb is placed, obviously the priority is to evacuate everyone above, below, or near the bomb. Don't forget that when police, fire, and other personnel enter the building, they may be unfamiliar with your floor plan, so they may need assistance. 
For larger organizations, search teams may be organized and trained to search suspected bomb areas. Training should include familiarization with hallways, restrooms, false ceiling areas, and every location where a device could be concealed. The evacuation or search team should be trained only in evacuation and search techniques and not in the techniques of neutralizing, removing, or otherwise having contact with a device. If a device is located, it should not be disturbed, but its location should be well marked and a route back to the device noted. What happens if the bomb goes off? Well, the first step is to protect yourself. As in the case of an earthquake, the best position to take is what is termed duck, cover, and hold. Duck under a stable object, such as a desk. Cover your head and face as much as possible and hold that position until it's declared safe to leave. Duck, cover, and hold are simple things. But you need to practice a couple of times because in case of an emergency, you want your reaction to be as quick as possible. Duck, cover, and hold. When told to evacuate a building, never use the elevators. Always use stairs when evacuating any building for whatever reason. Before opening doors, touch the door to make sure it's not hot from a fire. If it's too hot to touch with your hand, then don't open the door. Find another escape route. Stay away from glass windows or glass doors, as shattered glass can be deadly. The most important thing is not to panic. Stay calm and follow the procedures. Last but not least is to take all bomb threats seriously. Some may be prank calls, but then how can you tell? Gather as much information as you can and notify management. Every person has the responsibility to be alert for anything suspicious or out of place. It's better to report your suspicions than to wait for someone else to report it. Many of us never worry about bomb threats and bombings until we see it on television or read about it in the newspaper. Is a bomb threat something that can happen to you? The statistics say no, because bomb threats don't occur every day. However, if you're prepared and remain alert, you can reduce the threat even more. The best offense is a good defense. Thank you.